Hi, St. Pat's. Today, I have the pleasure of chatting with Tara Skoglund, a uh, St. Patrick native who is actually visiting us from France, which is just so fun. I am, it's like two o'clock in the afternoon here and bless her heart, it's like almost nine o'clock there and she's, she's talking with us and we're just catching up and getting to know one another and about her life in France. So, hey Tara. Hey, how's it going? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? How's life in France? It's it's good. Um, yeah, it's it's evening here, and uh, I'm on the west coast of France right now. I've been in France for uh, for coming up on three months um, in two days. So, yeah, it's it's beautiful we get spring a little bit earlier than, than Minnesota. So that's, that's been nice. So did you go to France then? Like, like right at the start of kind of all of this unfolding, all of COVID unfolding or did you say yeah. the, beginning of March? Uh, the beginning of, I came in the beginning of February. So, um, I, so COVID was a thing in China. Um, but it wasn't, like at that point, we didn't know that it was going to become this global pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, so I went, I came to, I was planning on coming for two months to learn French. And then I was going to be going to um, the Democratic Republic of Congo um, because they speak French there. That's why I needed to learn French. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so in the midst of that, about two weeks before I was supposed to leave for the Congo um, is when everything started shutting down both in France and the States. So, and the Congo, um, all borders have been closed. So, um, at, at that point when I was supposed to, was supposed to leave. So, um, yeah, so I stayed here. <laughs> wow. So you're in France until it's safe to come home or for the next few months, like when you would have been in Congo or what do you know? Is it a big question mark? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really, we don't know yet. Um, May 11th, my mom's birthday, um, is the day that confinement, which is what they're calling like the stay at home, um, Minnesota in France. Um, so the confinement is technically, they're going to tell us what we're going to do. Um, but it's for sure in, in, in force through May 11th. And what that looks like here is if I, sorry about that. That's um, okay. It's my battery. Um, so yeah, so when I leave the house, I, I have to carry a piece, piece of paper with me that says like where I was born, my birthday, where I live right now, and um, I have to choose one of six options. One of them is like, yes, I'm just getting exercise. Um, and which is the one I choose usually. And it's just like to go for a walk. Um, but you can go one kilometer from the place that you live one hour a day, once a day. Um, so that's like, they're really strict and you can get stopped by the police and fined if you don't have this paper or if like it's, expired or you're over your time or whatever so oh yeah yeah they're real serious here <laughs> have you been pulled over and asked um I wasn't I mean I wasn't driving but I was walking on the wrong side of the road so they you know stopped me and told me I had to walk on the other side of the road and then a few weeks later there were signs posted that you couldn't walk on that side of the road um, because I, I'm in a beach town, which is super nice. Um, I can walk on the opposite side of the road as the, as the, as the shore, but I can't walk on the shore side. So, um, they didn't give me a fine. They were just like, go over there. And I obeyed. <laughs> because they're just trying to like limit the like number of people that are walking the beach as well, or... Yeah, so the beach, the beach specifically is something that they're, um, because they don't want people like going to on vacation and like it becoming, oh, sure, like a very, a lot of people in one place. Mm -hmm. um, and so then they just set the boundaries pretty strict just to eliminate 
as much human contact as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's, um, that's what that's about. Wow. Yeah. yeah. We have no, like, we can't conceptualize that at all here. We have, we have yeah, the freedom to, to, we have enough space, you know, where we have the freedom to walk on the sidewalk and everybody's responding really respectfully to people. So that's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, so May, it's, 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 yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, no. So, so I get to, I'm staying at one of our, I'm, I'm a lay member of uh, the community of Beatitudes and we get to have mass every day, which is like, I know a huge blessing because most people can't. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's, it's hard though, because we have our doors open to people coming in to, to pray. Um, but they're not supposed, like, we're not supposed to be having public masses and we're not having public masses, but people come to pray and it's just this hard, it's, it's a hard balance. Um, so occasionally we had a woman today who just sat in the back of the parish or back of the church, um, and it was her feast day. So, um, so she stayed and was able to, to, to pray the mass, um, which is, which is really a gift. Um, but it's also weird because everybody's like, can I get by you? Can I breathe? You know, like we're within a meter of each other. Can we, you know, um, but also people are really friendly and just, you know, I, I have um, Beauty and the Beast in my head when I walk down the street. I'm like, bonjour, bonjour. Like, <laughs> so. Um, it's awesome. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> that is really cool. Yeah. So you are in France with your community, right? That's who you were going to be going to the Congo with. And um, mm -hmm. June, you were going to be doing some pilgrimages, correct? Yeah. So yeah. I was going to be leading some pilgrimages with, with young adults um, in June in France. And then hopefully we're still going to be doing some of those in the fall in Israel. Mm -hmm. um, but as we all know, nothing is certain at this time. So um, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see when, come, come May 11th, we'll maybe have some more answers. Will I be coming home? Will there be a way to get home or, um, will I stay in France? Um, you know, we don't know. Yeah. So what are you mm -hmm. doing now with your time in France since it's definitely not in the Congo, since you're not doing mission work? What's your time yeah. like now? Yeah, so um, my time, community life, it's a bit monastic right now, which is, which is, is really neat to live this a bit, is um, morning prayer and mass, uh, and then we have time for work, um, another prayer time, lunch, work time, which is when I work with, mostly when I work with Americans, mostly in America, um, and some, we have, we have a few, um, internationals as well, um, that we're working with. And so I usually am Skyping or Zooming with them, mm -hmm. um, providing some mentoring, especially in this time of just, um, just providing some normalcy and just some, like, um, we just need some extra care in this time. I think everybody does. And just to stay connected. Um, so yeah. That's awesome. That is really cool. It, it's kind of like um, what you were telling me about just, I mean, when you were telling me about what St. Pat's is doing, I think it's in a way, it's, it's different, but in a way it's similar in the, at the spiritual care level of just like, we're Skyping and Zooming with people and doing like Lexio Skypes and things like that to share, like share the scripture. Mm -hmm. Um with with one another which is which is really cool to connect and you guys are doing that in a, in a new way and I think it's just cool how we're all finding new ways to finding a new normal for the time yeah yeah and you and I had talked a little bit about how um like things are happening during quarantine or you know stay-at-home orders that wouldn't have happened otherwise and so I know your mom and I know your sister and I've heard your name a million times, but I've never met you. And I probably wouldn't have met you if it weren't for COVID-19. So um, just little things yeah. like that, you know, that I personally just have to kind of hold on to those small little joys because it's just an exhausting rhythm 
and um, it's an exhausting thing to try to like adapt to every day. Um, and so I can just imagine like how much of a light you are to the young people that you're talking with back here in the States and um, the people that you're being able to see in France. And it's just really cool that prayer is such a, um, a pillar of your day, you know, like those things stay true. And um, yeah. that's just really cool to hear about and witness and, and to hear you speak on. So thank you for that. Yeah. I think something I was talking to, um, I was talking to a priest about this morning was just the, and he really encouraged me in like having gratitude and just starting and ending my day in gratitude and just like, just at, and asking for the grace to be grateful, mm -hmm. um, just for the things we have, even in the midst of this. And I was like, I mean, I know I'm, I'm, I'm doing really well, which is, which is really nice. Like, uh, it's, I'm like, I'm sad. I cried a little bit that I wasn't able to go to the Congo. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, like I see God's hand in it and like, what, what gift, like what gift this is as well as, as a struggle. So I don't know, that's just an invitation that I was given today of like starting your day in gratitude. And I was like, Oh, maybe that's such as, someone back at St. Pat's too. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think the really, the cool part about that too is like asking for the grace. Um, you said it so beautifully, the grace to be grateful. And it's like, yeah, mm -hmm. I need to pray for the grace to be grateful before I just tell myself I need to list off a million things I'm grateful for. So, <laughs> um, yeah. It's and like this place in our that. spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. true. Thank it's you true. for sharing that. That's beautiful. Sure. <laughs> um, well, it has been super awesome to connect with you and to hear about your life in France and to see you. Um, before we, you know, log off here, I was just wondering if there's anything that you want to say to the St. Pat's parishioners back here in good old Minnesota. Mm, gosh. Um, well, first of all, no, no, I'm not going into a speech. I just want to say, like, I'm really, I'm really thankful for y'all. And, and now I sound Texan. Um, and, but, but how much I, I really do pray for you. I pray especially for everybody that can't go to mass. Um, because I know that's a grace that, that I get. Um, and I just think, I don't know, something I was also touched by of just like how, can I just share one like little theology thing that's really stuck with me in quarantine? Yeah. Just the idea of, of like, okay, so we read the Old Testament and, um, and how the Jews were exiled like a few times and, and how they turned when they were like they were turned away from the temple which is the dwelling of god they turned even more to scripture and like jews around the world like still scripture is their like their how they are in contact with god it's through that that um and like they keep the scripture in a special place in the church which is like in the front where like our tabernacles are, you know, like they keep the, their scriptures, their Torah roll, scrolls there. Um, and I was just thinking of how, like, we all have the scripture with us and like, we have the presence of God in that. And like, this, the, the Eucharist is a source and summit of our faith, but we also like, not, but, and Christ gave us himself in scripture. The word became flesh. And so it's just this whole thing, which was like really touched me. And okay, really last thing. Oh my gosh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Really last thing. Um, especially during Lent, the readings kept being, um, do not harden your heart. And I, I was translating it from French and the French is really interesting. It's like, do not firm your heart, do not harden. Like just, it was this really visceral thought of hardening. And I'm like, as we're getting closed into our homes, into a monastery, into 
I mean, that's where I've been. <laughs> um, but like closed into these places, the Lord is saying, do not close your heart. Do not close your heart. And so I think just this all is an invitation to open our hearts and with the scripture, with his presence in the scripture, you know? Um, yeah. That's what I've been sitting with a lot. That's so, beautiful. Um, I love you all. And thank you so much. This is just a gift. I really appreciate this time with y'all, with you. Yeah, it was, it was. I think, I know I loved it. And I know that many people back here are just really enjoying these interviews. And they're going to be so happy to see a, a fun, smiley, bright, familiar face. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you, and so good to meet you. God bless you. Bye.